Right, so D was crossed out because, again, that's talking about Tinker versus Des Moines, another court case, but not the ones mentioned up here. So A is the correct answer. And in case you're wondering, hey, Ms. Church, you sounded like you knew that before. Why do you keep on reading everything? I'm reading everything to make sure I'm not getting confused or that there isn't a better answer. Because sometimes the HSA will say, which is the best answer? So it's always a good habit to just read everything. So you go, and then you feel super confident in your answer. Okay. Read the headline below. Supreme Court to decide constitutionality of arrest procedures. This headline would have been most appropriate for which of the court cases. So, arrest, right? You're under arrest. That's when someone is immediately first getting, um, the police are coming in and they're putting them in handcuffs, right? So, so our court cases are Miranda versus Arizona, Gideon versus Wainwright, New Jersey versus TLO, and Tinker versus Des Moines. When I see the word arrest, I know immediately New Jersey versus TLO, not gonna be it, and Tinker versus Des Moines, right? Because they have to do with school issues and student issues, and we're talking about arrest. Um, Miranda versus Arizona, Miranda was a his rights, and Gideon, even though we can't really see him because this church is just learning how to use this thing. Right, Gideon, um, he needed, he had to represent himself. Um, so even though Gideon has to do a due process, that's what he has to do with the rest procedures. So again, so Gideon is not going to be involved, and Miranda versus Arizona is the right one. I'm going to move this guy a little bit. All right. Which of these is a characteristic of an authoritarian system of government? Mmm, authoritarian, right? Authority. Okay? So let's look. We're looking for the one that's going to look like authority. The government's got the authority. Popular sovereignty, that's when people, right, are involved. They're not going to be the authority in an authoritarian. Equal protection under the law. Again, authoritarian, they're going to make all the laws and it's not going to be up to the people. So no nope. restriction of the personal freedoms. Probably it, right? There's an authoritarian government. They're going to be able to decide what you can and cannot do. But let's just read the last answer. Ma majority rules with minority rights. Mm -mm. Nope, because the government's going to be making the authority. They do not care about the minority or the majority. They're going to care about who's in charge. So C is the right answer. All the citizens and a community take an equal role in local government by meeting to debate and vote on laws and political issues. The, this form of government is best described as, and this is one of those best questions, right? There might be a good answer, but we're looking for the best. And it says, um, oh, and I'm actually gonna move this because we're missing a key word, which is every. Every meaning all. So the citizens are doing everything in government by voting on everything. So a direct democracy is when people directly get involved. They're making those government decisions. Hmm, sounds exactly like what I just said, but let's double check. Presidential democracy, right, that's when the president's gonna be in charge of the democracy. Again, they could have that, but that, this sounds like a better answer than this. Parliamentary democracy is a democracy that has a parliament. Again, not that best answer. Representative democracy is when citizens pick their leaders to vote on those laws. That's not happening here. The citizens are doing the voting. So goodbye, B. Hello, A. Okay, in which form of government do states, cities, and counties have the least political power? Now, when I see states, cities, and counties, I'm thinking local, 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 not the central governments. So our choices are federal, unitary, confederate, and democratic. Well, bam, looking at this, I know democratic, that is not a form of government, right? That's a type of government. Federal is when the central and local share power. And the unitary is when the central has that power. And confederate is when the local has this power. Now, this is a tricky question. Because this is saying that local has the least amount of power. So even though I might say, oh, those are all local, Confederate, Confederate has to be Confederate. This is the one saying that they actually don't have the power. So Confederate, goodbye. It is not you. And Federal, it's not you because we're not sharing power. It's me, Unitary.
Which of these is an advantage of a representative democracy? Again, representative democracy. Political parties have similar platforms. Citizens are able to vote on all issues. Government agencies make decisions quickly. Legislators are elected by the people. Political parties have similar platforms. That's just not true, right? I mean, you guys remember the election between the Democrats and the Republicans? So a representative democracy is talking about people choosing people to represent their ideas. So Democrats and Republicans or any political party don't really have any place in this question. Citizens are able to vote on all issues. No, that's direct democracy. We just did that question. Government agencies make decisions quickly. I mean, yeah, it's going to be quicker, I guess, than having everyone vote on everything. But the real, the best answer is legislators are elected by the people, right? You're electing someone to represent you, OK? And that's why it's a representative democracy. OK. Which of these acts is least likely to take place in a totalitarian system? So again, I'm seeing ooh, total, right? That total power. The government makes, makes rules about what jobs people may have. Leaders dictate what will be taught in schools. Political parties compete for control of the government. Local officials take orders from national officials. Again, this is one of those tricky reading questions. Because I'm thinking about that total power, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, yeah, they do that in that type of government. They do that too. And yeah, that probably happens also. So that means those questions are wrong, because they're looking for what's least likely. So goodbye D, goodbye B, and goodbye A, no C. Political parties compete. There's not going to be any competition in this type of government, because the government is going to have all of that control. There's nothing to take. Okay, you got a chart. These ones are a little hard to break down. But you got to look at the chart, break it down first, and then look at the question. So keywords I'm seeing, I'm seeing voters elect. Okay, and then I'm seeing an executive branch and a president, a legislative branch, a national congress, a senate, federal chamber of deputies. Hmm, I haven't heard of this before. Oh, I look at the heading. It's about Mexico. Okay, so it's not about America, it's about Mexico. And then I see confirm, presidential appointments, the Supreme Court, and then I see appoints judges. Okay, hmm, looking at this, now let me see the question. Based on the information in this diagram, which of these best describes the system of government of Mexico? A monarchy, hmm, I don't see anything about a king or queen. A democracy, huh, in a democracy people vote. I saw that there was a vote up here, voters are, voters are participating. Sounds like it could be it, but let's just double check. Dictatorship? No, because mm -mm, you wouldn't have voters in a dictatorship. And confederation? Uh-uh, that's just in there to trick us. So the correct answer is B, democracy. Okay, another quote. Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Hmm, okay, so lack of power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So power equals not so great, right? Because corrupt means that someone's not doing something that they should be doing. And that if you have an absolute power, you're going to be causing even greater problems. So based on the quotation, Lord Acton would probably be most opposed, opposed meaning against which system of government? Authoritarian? Huh, probably because authoritarian, they're going to have that absolute control. Democratic, he's not going to be opposed to that because there's not absolute power there. Um, federal, again, they're just trying to throw in different terms for us to pick them. And unitary, again, that's talking about the central government having power, but that's a form and not a system or a type. So the right answer is A, authoritarian. And that is it. I hope you guys learned a lot of government, and go HSA.